So I want to go over some methods that I use uh, when it comes down to performing or sequencing my melodic uh, chops that I've created on my MPC. Uh, th there's this topic right here is something that is very personal and it's going to be different for everybody. Uh, the way I do it is not the right or wrong way. It's just the way I perform my sample chops on top of my drums. Right here, I have the 2000 XL and right next to it, the SP404. Now with the 2000 XL, uh, since it's an older machine and it takes a very long time to chop up samples, the way I would sample into this machine is in my head. I already had um, a way that or an idea of how I was going to chop it. Now, it is very tedious with the XL, but uh, again, I kind of have an idea. I'm not just sampling anything and hope hoping that it works, pretty sure is going to work because that's why I'm sampling into the MPC. This record, I'll actually show you what I have right here on the pads. I sampled two bars, were pretty open for me uh, to play with, and this is what I have. <laughs> Those two bars sounded really good. And now, one thing to keep in mind, there's four beats in one bar, which is one, two, three, four. For anybody that's a little confused on like, how am I chopping that up? I'm chopping that up uh, four slices in one bar. So I'm chopping or I'm making a chop every beat with inside of that bar. That's how I have it laid out with my pads, four pads in a row, and that's one full bar. Now this was the introduction of the song and it sounded great, but I noticed that his voice comes in or different parts of the song come in that are a little distracting for me to perform on top of my drum break. So what I'll do is I will just keep going through the record and keep listening to different sections of the song and see if I could find other bars that are empty, that either there's no drums or there's no vocals, because trust me, in a record that you hear the introduction, and you're like, oh man, that's the only thing I can use. Keep listening to the record that you might find, even if it's just a few beats with inside of bars that are empty with no vocals, you can sample that into your MPC and put that into different pads. Now, I went to a bridge of this record and I found another bar. It was just one bar that there was no vocals. It wasn't too distracting with the vocals that I got and this is what I have. Amor. Amor. I mean, he's already singing, but the way he's singing is so soft and he's giving a lot of space in between. So I was able to just grab another bar. I don't know what minute or second of the record it is. And I just put it into the third row. Now I kept going and I want to listen for variation. So it's not too repetitive. And at, at the end of the song, I found another bar that I have right here. Now this is really cool because it has this instrument. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a flute or is some other element that came into the song as it's building up. And now I have four different bars that sound completely different. The first two is the introduction that has some strings on it. And then I have a bar that's very dry and I can use that as my verse. Amor. Which is not too distracting. And then I have something else with some flutes. If anybody wants these sample chops that I actually have with my XL, if you are part of the sample sharing program with my YouTube community, uh, I will be releasing these and these will work on any of your MPC one live X, any of your newer MPCs. I will be making these available and also the drum break that I'm using on the XL. I will release that to you guys. So be on the lookout for that. If you are part of the sample sharing program. Now, as I'm talking about variation and different sections of the song that that we're sampling every song there's movement there's uh there's pulse inside of that song so you'll notice that there's changes different instruments come in and different bars now the cool thing about having these changes is once i have let's say just four different bars from different sections of that song i could mix and match beats from different bars hopefully this is making sense but i'm able to grab let's say um see how I'm just kind of picking and choosing. Now, for me, I really like this bar right here. Amor. Amor. 
he says amor, but I think that's just annoying if I'm looping that over and over for too long. So feel free to experiment once you have everything chopped up into bars, because once you have that, you don't have to follow the sequence that is within the record. That's the fun part about sampling is flipping it into your own sequence. And what is the rule or what is the go to way of flipping it? I don't know. That's up to you to decide. I mean, I don't even have to follow the one, two, three, four. I could even go. So even that would work. But let's actually hear this with drums, because I think it's going to interpret a little better once we, we listen to the drums on top of this. And something to keep in mind, uh, you know, do you start with a sample first or do you start with drums first? Uh, you know, everybody has a different way of starting their beats, but I like to have a drum sequenced already within my MPC. So when I do chop up my samples, I'm kind of getting an idea of how I want to play or resequence these chops. So let's say we right here we have... So this is why starting like this is honestly one of the most easiest and uh, creative ways because you don't have to go with the linear sequence. You could pick, you could stick with one bar that you really like how it sounds, but as I'm going through each beat, every bar, if you notice this one, very dry, but let's say at the fourth beat, I wanna pick a different bar that has a flute in the background that has like a flute that's dry. The, there's also the flute, but it's going down. This one has a flute with a little more elements. So I could just decide if I want to try anything from different bars. That sounds really cool. So that's where you start getting creative. You start having fun. You start uh, getting connected with your beat on top of that. And, and this section right here is where I always say I could spend hours right here sitting down, just trying different variations, whatever sounds or feels the best for me. That's what I'm going to stick with. Um. Now, I myself just have bank A filled up on the XL, but I could honestly keep going to bank B, bank C, bank D. Don't just listen to the record uh, first two bars and decide, you know what, I'm going to take that and that's it. I'm not going to listen to the rest of the record. Keep listening. Keep listening because I, I guarantee you there's going to be, it doesn't even have to be a bar that you can take from. Sometimes just one small beat or two beats within a bar that there's no vocals on there, you could just snatch that and put it in some of these pads and create your own bars. Uh, that's how we came up with this loop right here or this beat that I have right here. Now on the XL, uh, this is a much slower MPC than any of the newer MPCs. So one thing that I noticed uh, with the XL, and this is why I'm filming this video right now, is because it would make me think uh, a different when I'm sampling into it. Uh, with the other MPCs or the MPC one or my, my MPC live, I just dropped the needle and started chopping up as I'm sampling at the same same time I have everything finished by the time I lift up the needle now with the XL the way I think is I'm like okay I listen to a bar on the record I sample it into pad one I chop it up I listen to another bar chop it up into pad two I keep going it's like I'm pre-approving before I even chop it up versus the newer MPC I'm just sampling and going as I go and hope it works and I notice that a lot of the times with the newer ones uh, a lot of my beats they just don't work I'm just gonna turn it off go to the next turn off go to the next and this is something that I explained a while back where uh, this everything is so fast uh, right here I, I really really have to think is this record gonna work is this something that I really want to to dedicate my time and put my investment into chopping this up because it will take a very long time on something like the XL 
versus any of the newer ones. Now, I don't want to get off topic, but the whole point here is uh, get creative with your loops. Uh, don't just sample four bars and then just call it a day, throw a drum break. I mean, you could do that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's really no right or wrong way of doing things. If it sounds good to you, then rock with that. I really have fun uh, uh, trying these different variations with different bars of the record that I'm choosing. So hopefully by the end of this video, you're able to uh, pick up your MPC or any sampler. I mean, I'm using the Excel. This could be in any sampler that you own, that you have. It doesn't have to be no MPC, uh, but just experiment with the different beats within the bars and mix and match, mix and choose, uh, rearrange things, reverse some of the pads and try different things. Don't be afraid to experiment. And if it sounds bad, just undo it or turn off the MPC and start all over again. <laughs> so hopefully you took some from this video. All right. So that's going to do it for me today. Uh, thank you so much. I hope you picked up some out of this video. I'll catch you guys on our next video. Peace. <laughs>